the atmosphere does not warm the ocean. The ocean warms the atmosphere. If you put a gun to my head and said, tell the truth, are you absolutely certain that the atmosphere does not warm the ocean, but rather the ocean warms the atmosphere, I would say yes. Yet I just saw a spiel given by a scientist, and he happens to be in cahoot with my nemesis, Josh Willis, with the JPL, and this guy's name, as best I can pronounce it, is Remick. It could be Remich or Romich, but he's one of the lead scientists at Scripps Oceanographic Institute. Scripps, Remich, R-O-E-M-M-I-C-H. And at the end of his spiel, someone asked the question, why is the earth getting warmer? And he said, I could give you the cop-out answer, which is, all I do is take measurements. I record the temperature. I don't postulate why the temperature would change. And that would have been the truthful answer, but he said, but I'll give you a second answer. And that is, that, see, he said in the speech that the oceans have been warming for 135 years that he knows of because that's how far the records go back to a British warship expedition, science expedition. The ship was called the Challenger, and it sailed over the course of a couple of years all around the oceans of the world. It came back to Britain after a, a voyage of more than two years. The ship was called Challenger, and it took temperature readings of various depths of the ocean And those temperature readings can be compared to modern day and several readings taken in between there, those two extremes, to produce a chart which he says, and I couldn't see the chart, but which he says shows that the Earth's oceans have increased in heat such that the temperature has risen a half a degree Celsius. And he says this is because of carbon dioxide emissions from human activity. And he's supposedly a scientist and he either doesn't know or is lying that the heat capacity of the oceans, the oceans are extremely deep and they cover most of the surface of this planet. The Pacific alone covers nearly half the planet. It takes a lot of heat to warm. Matter of fact, he probably knows this, that the, the, the say, say the ocean average depth is, is mile, a mile or more. Well, the top few meters of that water can contain more heat than the total height of the atmosphere above it. The ocean holds a lot more heat, like 90%. And I believe he made a comment like that in his talk, that to understand the climate, you should understand the ocean temperature because it dominates. That is where the heat gets stored. Yet he said at the end, and I'm repeating, that he surmises that the oceans began to warm over 135 years ago because of human activity. In other words, he's saying that when uh, steel mills in England back in the year 1800 and 1850, 1880, in factories, first in England and then some in the United States, industrialization began to put carbon dioxide in the air because of burning coal. 
and now we burn coal and natural gas and gasoline, but back then originally it was coal. The burning of coal in the space of a hundred years, as little as it was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, was sufficient to warm the atmosphere, sufficient to warm the ocean. I say that's a physical impossibility because the heat in the ocean came from the sun. All the atmosphere can do is retard the transfer of that heat from the ocean to the outer space, either through a greenhouse effect of water vapor or through the reflective properties of clouds blocking the sunlight from entering and thus cooling the planet. Water vapor both cools and warms the planet in response to ocean heat. Atmospheric heat supposedly trapped by greenhouse gases supposedly created and put into the atmosphere 200 years ago is nowhere near powerful enough to warm the atmosphere enough to have a noticeable effect on the oceans. Yet this guy said that's the case. The chief scientist at Scripps Oceanographic Institute, whose name is Rimich, R-O-E-M-M-I-C-H. He also said, and here's a clue as to what he's thinking. Someone asked, what is the cost of these Argo temperature buoys, of which there are thousands now in the oceans all over the world? What is this cost and who's paying for it? And he said half of it is paid for by the United States, and that, that amounts to $10 million. And I, I, I don't know if that's per year or a upfront cost, but at least up front it costs $10 million. And other nations are contributing the other half, a total of $20 million. And uh, if he were to say publicly that he's skeptical of man-made global warming, his funding would be cut off. And he would go back to driving the used car that he drove in the past when he could hardly afford to buy decent clothing to wear to the classroom to teach his class on ocean oceanography. It could be that he is so intimidated by the, the dreadful thought of losing his huge funding, which he said came through the NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, Commerce Department, via Obama. He's so horrified at the prospect of losing his huge funding that he will tow the party line and say it's man-made carbon dioxide that had already warmed the ocean as far back as the records go, which is 135 years ago, back to the days of the Challenger ship, the British warship Challenger, which took temperature readings in various places in the ocean as it circumnavigated slowly the earth.